So one of those common repair items around the house is your doors. Over time, whether it's your home settling or just hinges getting loose, the latch versus the latch plate can get misaligned. And then you can't close your doors and get them to latch appropriately. That's what we have going on here with this interior door. And this one obviously is not a lightweight hollow core door. It's actually a solid wood door with glass panes in it. So it has a little weight to it. This is not a new issue. This is something that the homes had as long as we've owned it for a couple months now. And it's just something that I want to address now and get it back to work, working order so it can latch and last for a long time and not be an issue that keeps coming up. So let me walk you through. We'll start with the easy uh, issues or repairs that you can address and then we'll work our way up to more complex. And then hopefully one of those in there is gonna fix your issue that you're seeing and get your doors back to working order. So stay tuned. Okay, so we'll start with the most common and the easiest to fix when you have misalignment with your latch to the latch plate, and that is on the hinge side. So you can take your door and just grab a hold of it, move side to side, and you'll see if you have any play in your hinges. If you do, then what we can do is just grab a simple Phillips head screwdriver and go through and try to tighten each of these screws. Now this is pretty tight, but I do have the screw on the bottom that continues to turn. Again, this is a very common problem where the screw is actually stripped out. So we'll back that screw out. And when you back these out, you'll see they're actually only three quarters or an inch long. So they're, they're actually very small and obviously very easy for it to strip out. So what do you do? Uh, my first option that I recommend is I always carry a few of these packages made by Everbuilt. And what this is, uh, it's two different lengths. They have the one inch like you saw, and then they have the two and uh, one quarter of an inch screw. So for this one specifically, so I don't have to do any work on the actual jam itself, I'm just gonna upgrade it to a two and a quarter inch screw. And this one has a head on it that actually doesn't need a pilot hole. It can, it can go ahead and just start to screw it in in the existing hole. Now this screw is gonna be superior because it actually is gonna go all the way through the jam and into the frame behind it, the two by four. So it's gonna provide a much better hold and you'll actually be able to tighten it down like so. Okay, so check all your other hinges. Make sure they're all tight. There's no need to go to the latch side and start to make adjustments if your hinges are off to begin with. Because then anything that you uh, adjust on the one side, the play is just gonna work loose over time and then it's gonna undo that work you did. So start with your hinges, make sure all those are good to go. And then, and then if you still have misalignment, then we'll move on to step two. So what you want to start off with here, I'm just using some pipe sealant. You can use some caulk or anything that you can apply to the bottom of this latch. And then what you'll see is we want to compare where the latch is actually hitting the latch plate. So I'm going to retract the latch slightly, get the door closed completely, and then touch the latch to the plate, move it back and forth. So now we can see where was the bottom of the latch with respect to the latch plate. This one, quite a bit of interference, honestly. And so even though in my situation, I have a little bit too much of the strike plate that I need to remove to get it to line up, this might work for yours. So what I would do is just get a simple hand file. And usually in a common set, you'll have one like this that has the the concave surface, which actually matches up well to the bottom of the, the latch plate. And you'll just go in one direction and do passes. You're gonna, in my case, I actually need to eat away a little bit at the wood, but then also get into the metal and start working that down to give you more clearance and then your latch will line up and be able to 
latch appropriately. So just single passes, and this will take you some time, and you might actually work up a little bit of sweat, but it might get your clearance in there so then your door is latching again and your problem is solved. Okay, so for most of you, tightening those screws, maybe getting some new longer screws and getting your hinges tight is gonna solve the problem for you. Others, maybe a little bit of filing on the latch plate itself is gonna make that align. Great, you're good to go and your door is back to working order. In my case, because of that additional interference, I don't wanna file that all the way down, so I need to find another way. That other way is going to be actually bending the hinges or adjusting those hinges so it, it repositions the door within the door jam itself. So what you would do, how you start this off, is just by assessing all of your clearance and getting a game plan. So if I look up top, I have about 3 eighths of an inch gap at the top, so plenty of room to play with at the top. On the, on the latch side, I have a quarter of an inch. Usually you'd wanna go for about an eighth of an inch on that side. And then on the hinge side, it's pretty tight. Uh, usually you're looking for 1 16th of an inch. Actually at the top and bottom of mine are, uh, I'd say less than that. So that is the gaps I'm working with. And then at the floor, I have plenty of room uh, between the hard surface or for you for, for carpet. So what I'm gonna do, because my latch is lower than the latch plate, is I need to adjust the latch side in the vertical direction. So that will rotate the whole door, right? So that's why you need to make sure you have room on the top because when you now move that latch up, it is going to move the bottom of the door towards the jam and it'll also move the top up. So if you're tight in any of those areas, adjusting the bottom hinge and adjusting that towards the latch is not gonna do it for you because now you're gonna have interference. So you do have to just kind of get that game plan and make sure that making one adjustment to one hinge isn't gonna, let's say, move your latch up and solve your problem, but then just cause significant interference and now your door doesn't shut because the door is hitting the jam. So let me show you how to start to make these adjustments and then get this door to line up. Okay, so what I wanna do is reposition the door in the frame so the latch goes through the latch plate. To start that off, I'm gonna take some side cutters and I'll grip the top of the door pin and then just tap on the bottom and the pin will easily come out. So once I have the lower hinge loose with the pin out, I'm going to shim the latch side of the door so the door is supported and it doesn't sag because I also wanna remove this middle pin. So then I'll only have the top hinge pin in place and I'll be able to adjust the shims so that I can actually get the latch high enough to go through the latch plate. So here I'm tapping on the shims at the bottom, slowly moving the latch up, and you can see just a little jiggle of the handle. Now the, the latch actually goes through the latch plate, so it's just clearing the bottom of that. So I'll just tap it a little bit more to get a little bit more clearance between the latch and latch plate. And now I know what I'm dealing with. Okay, so once I got the hinge pin removed from the bottom hinge and the middle hinge, and then shimmed up the latch side, the bottom of the door to get it where I wanted to get the latch setting, the space needed was a little bit more than I had originally bargained for. So I was just gonna bend this hinge, but I don't think that's gonna work. I think it's gonna uh, be a little bit too much. I'm not saying you couldn't do it, but I'm gonna go with option two, and that is to actually space out with just some washers that I had. Uh, each of these washers is 1 16th of an inch thick, so I'm going to put two washers and then put the screw, I know the hole's massive, but put the screw between there, and then this hinge plate is going to be spaced out from the jam uh, by 1 8th of an inch. So I'm gonna be using 1 8th equivalent of an inch spacing on the bottom hinge. Uh, middle hinge, I'm probably gonna do 1 8th as well, and I might even do a 16th at the top hinge to get it all uh, pushed out a bit from this jam side and then get that latch matching up. Okay, to make this a little bit easier, I'm going to position the two 
washers on each of the holes and secure it with painter's tape. If I didn't do this, then I would be kind of doing a dance of trying to get the screws through the washers and holding them all in place and then putting it against the door jam. It'd be very hard. So what I want to do is position the washers appropriately, making sure that the washers both do not interfere too much with the screw holes. They actually, the ones I'm using, just because they're the ones I had available, uh, are a little larger than I'd want. I do have to do a little bit of a dance of getting the screw lined up and then making sure that they do not overlap past the edge of the hinge. So just get them all taped up. The less tape you do here to get them secured, the less you have to clean up later. So you might wanna take your time and, and really only use as much as needed. And then you can see the small screws, I am replacing those to two one inch screws, replacing the three quarters inch, and then the one two and a quarter inch in the middle. All right, we'll start with the lower hinge now with the washers secured on the back side. Put the two and a quarter inch screw through the middle, and I'm just gonna hand tighten these, taking my time. You can use your, your cordless drill, uh, but I just like to hand tighten these because you can get in a bit of a trouble uh, over tightening and then stripping the, the screw. So it kind of puts you a few steps back. So you get the top one in place, the bottom one inch, and now once everything's pretty snug, I'm gonna go around and then I'll just trim off that painter's tape so I don't have blue tape kind of hanging out around the, the hinge. So just trim it up, take your time. Um, probably gonna take you a little bit longer than you wanted. So the less painter's tape you, you use to secure the washers, the better, because then you're gonna have less cleanup later on to get it looking the way it should. So do the last adjustments here, and then once you have all the painter's tape off, I would go around and just do one last tightening of the screws for both, in, in my case, the bottom and also the middle hinge. And then I'll give you a, a look on the inside. Here is the hinge spaced out there with the, the two washers in place. All right, the hinges are adjusted and we now have a latching door. Hopefully one of the steps we went through, because every different scenario is gonna call for more or less work in how you tackle that and how you get your door back aligned and back to latching. If we didn't cover something uh, that you're seeing, jump down in the comment section and let me know. I'll jump in there and help you out any way that I can. Remember all the screws and the washers and the different things we used in this video, down in the description, you'll find those links as well. So if you enjoy this one, if it helped you out, don't forget to hit that like button before you take off and subscribe to our channel because we'll keep videos coming out on a weekly basis that's gonna help you around the house. So we'll catch you on the next one and best of luck on your everyday home repairs. Take care.